In today's video, we're bringing you a workshop episode on how to replace the Serpa Time belt and belt tensioner for a Fiat Abarth 500. Now this was an absolute nightmare of a job. Replacing the belt is easy enough, you can do that in situ, but replacing the tensioner is an absolute nightmare. You only have about half inch to play with to unbolt the tensioner, so I had to fashion a special tool to do this. Now the content today is going to be very ad hoc. I filmed it on my iPhone, so don't expect any great cinematics or any fantastic footage. It was purely done very ad hoc, just, just to provide you the specific pertinent details of how to replace the belt and the tensioner. There isn't any other videos out there from what I can see to how to replace this tensioner. And I'm pretty sure that's because at a dealership, they have to drop the engine totally down to be able to do that or pull the engine totally out of the car. Either drop it down on the engine mount or take the engine totally out of the car to replace this tensioner because it's such limited access so hopefully this video is very useful for you even though it's quite ad hoc so this is the old belt by the way excuse the recording i'm recording just on my phone but iphones are pretty good nowadays now if you squelch the belt you can see in some places it is cracked here you can see for example the belt's cracked so that was going to give at some point so that serpentine belt has clearly been on there quite a long time so it needed to be removed. I think it was actually the belt that was causing the problem, not the bearing on the tensioner. This is the bolt on the tensioner that came off. Now, there is some play in this pulley. This is the actual tensioner plastic part itself. And there is some play in that pulley. And I compared that to the new tensioner that I've put on. So that could have been that whining. Um, so it was either that that was whining or the belt itself. And the belts are known to, to wear and make a noise. This bolt goes down here. And this bolt is located up behind the panel of the car. It is absolute hell to remove. I'll just show you where that bolt is. It's up here. Absolute nightmare to get to. As you can see, you've got the chassis of the car is in the way there. So you can't get a proper spanner in there. And the only way to do it properly is to actually drop the engine it, totally on its mount. Um, to do that, you'd have to dismantle all this area. I had the undercover off anyway to see how feasible that was. Absolute nightmare. But what I thought I'd try and do is fashion a tool to get in there. So what I did, I measured the distance from the chassis, from the chassis member to that bolt, to the tensioner bolt, to this section. And I cut off an Allen key just so, it was just the right length to be able to fit into the bolt. So I got this and I fashioned it so as it would just fit into there, like so, with enough clearance with that inside here, with enough clearance there for that chassis member to be here. To be able to then fashion this inside there and then I put a socket with a, an extension on the back like this so I could get this extension over this allen key for leverage and then underneath here underneath here, I mean you can see I managed to get the spanner up there and loosen it off incredible though that sounds it worked i was absolutely astonished myself if i'm being quite honest and then having loosened it off i then cleaned the mating faces behind behind this section and then put the new tensioner in so there's like a little uh, lever or, or, or um piece of metal that goes in the top that keeps the tensioner under tension so you can put the cap so you can put the auxiliary belt on quite easily and then you loosen that off. You have to then put this under tension again and then um, release the uh, item in the top, which is in effect holding it under tension to allow you to put the auxiliary belt on. But it's not that hard to hold this and put the auxiliary bolt belt on anyway. And I'll just show you how you do that because that is a 13 mil socket, which is this one. And you can't get anything else under there to hold the tensioner because Nothing other than a ring spanner. Sorry, you can't get a socket under there because of the 
because of the tightened space you have to put this ring spanner on there and then you push it really hard like so you can see that move and that releases the tension you have to hold it like that while you either take the belt off or put the belt belt on and that's how you put the belt on you can see the new belt there is fully on it's on the aircon pulley at the top and it comes round to the alternator pulley which is that one just sorry just writing that up a bit for you which is this one here that's the alternator pulley and that's the tensioner and this is the crank pulley and this is obviously what drives it all the crankshaft so job done if you're enjoying this workshop video then please give the video a like very important for our channel and if you like our style of content then please think about subscribing now back to the video and that's the access panel so you only have to remove this small access panel here to be able to gain access to this point but everything else is done through that section it's just hell and this is the panel had to be removed just here so it's not too bad to remove that panel it's only three screws and that comes off quite easily that's the under tray I've got to put that under tray back on again. I didn't actually need to remove the under tray. I only took that off in case I had to loosen the engine mounts and drop the engine down. And therefore I, I loosened off some of the underneath part of the car. But once I realized that just wasn't going to be possible and I fashioned that tool, that sorted the problem. And there's the tool, which is in effect just a cut down Allen key. If you've got to replace the auxiliary belt tensioner on an Abarth for on a Fiat 500. The reason why there aren't any videos online or why there aren't many, I don't think there are any videos online to do that is because it's a nightmare. Probably people haven't done it and it's been done by garages because it's a nightmare getting in there. I don't know how garages do it. I assume they drop the engine because it's the only way you're gonna get full access. I very much doubt that they fashion a tool and spend you know, about two and a half hours <laughs> fashioning the tool and, and messing around with it to loosen it off and tighten it back up again because it was not easy. Very, very tricky, but where there's a wheel, there's a way. Got it done. So I'm just gonna finish off now, putting the wheel back on, putting the under tray back on, putting the wheel back on and lowering it off the axle stands. Obviously, when you um, take the wheel off, when you get the car up in the air, make sure you keep, you work safe, guys. Paramount is safety. So two axle stands underneath there. Each of those axle stands, as you can see, will take three tons each individually. And that's a three ton jack as well. Very low profile jack, because I was using it on the uh, 458 on the Ferrari. So you can't get underneath anything um, on a Ferrari without a very, very low profile jack. But yeah, so that's that job done. And um, now when I, Fire it up, it's nice and quiet. Just take it out of gear. Last thing you want is it trying to jump off the axle stands. Believe you me, that was very very different before it was making a hell of a whining sound so that is a massive difference we'll put some b-roll in there of what the sound it was making before if we've got some i think i got some from from some footage i took before If you were looking to purchase your first supercar or add a car to your collection, Rich Reviews has already helped multiple owners secure their dream supercar. We have a mix and match of services to help take the pain away to ensure a happy, memorable purchase away from the stress that can be caused by car research and dealing negotiations. Our mix and match of services include telephone support calls, pre-purchase inspection and car collection video. For more information, please contact me via message in the comments below or at the following email address. Now back to the video. When you're removing the access panel, there's a little screw just behind this pipe here. And what I did was I just pulled the sleeving down to be able to provide access to it. And you can get in there then with a little, with a little Torx bit to be able to gain access to that screw. It's a little bit of a bugger, but it's, it's all right once you pull the sleeving down on that brake pipe. What I did was I just sprayed some WD-40 down into there and then it enabled that sleeving to ease down. I've just put a bit more WD-40 on there now so I can ease the sleeving back over. There 
we go. You have to be careful, of course, that you don't put any undue pressure on that brake pipe because you don't want to break it or you don't want it to leak. And obviously you don't want to break it, it's, it's your brakes at the end of the day going to the caliper here. So that's it, I just need to put the wheel back on and we're done and that's the access panel there. So all back together again, I just need to put the wheel on, torque the wheel down and then we're done.